What's up guys, Josh from Strengthside. This is a full body stretching, mobility, movement routine. Someone asked me the other day, Josh, do you have a master stretching routine you'd recommend doing every day? Why? Yes, I do. It's called the daily practice. This is it. You can download it for free. So guys, since stretching can be a little dry and boring, let's make it fun. Let's bring some sexy into this. And we begin with hip rotation. So just like this guy in the video, you're going to be rotating the leg inward and outward. Now, try to keep the pelvis in a pretty stable position here so we're not swinging the hips open. Um, that is going to make a lot of the rotation come from the hip, and that's what we want as we rotate outward into external rotation. We rotate inward into internal rotation. Go ahead and switch legs as this dude just did in the video. Hip rotations are a great way to start opening up the hips and to also get us ready for some of the other stretches that we're going to do later in the routine. Probably above all else is uh, how cool you look when you do hip rotations to be on the ground flailing your legs around um, in this kind of provocative seated position. Yeah, okay, now after doing single leg rotation, we're gonna do double leg rotation and now we're gonna let the hips move. So we're going to rotate the hips so we can get those knees down to the ground or somewhere close. So one leg will be an external rotation, one leg will be an internal rotation. And boy, after doing those single leg rotations, these are going to feel very, very nice on your hips. So what is this white stool doing here in the background? Well, we're about to find out right now because we're moving on to our first upper body stretch. This is gonna be a standing downward dog stretch. So you can use a countertop or a wall, anything works. You're going to reach the hands onto that surface and then you're going to step your legs back and you're going to press your chest and head downward. Now, I'm keeping my knees bent in the beginning here to keep my tailbone tucked. We wanna keep posterior tilt in that pelvis and then that allows us to get all of this extension from the mid back and the T-spine, right? So we wanna feel like that area between the shoulder blades is really opening up here and now of course of course, of course, maybe you're not able to get into this as deep as I am. That's why we're doing it. Don't forget that. So just all the, the force that should be going down in your body is just pressing those armpits and chest downward while the hips stay up. That's going to be achieving that good stretch through the mid back. So truth be told, this is my second time filming this because the first time I forgot to grab something for my knee on this stretch and I damn near blew out a kneecap. Just kidding, it was just a little bit rough on the knees, but now we're going into some front hip opening. In the daily practice, you have a few different options here. I'm going to start in a normal half kneeling hip flexor stretch position. I'm trying to tuck my tailbone, keep my torso hollow and squeeze my right glute. Now I'm gonna pick up that back foot and pull that heel towards my butt, but I'm trying not to let that affect my hollow position. So this is just capturing the quad now more. And you guys are smart. You guys know you need to stretch the front of the hip, right? Well, if you don't know, all the sitting that we do is really just tightening up that front of the hip. So I'm usually having anyone that I work with do some front of the hip stretching uh, almost daily because it's just needed with all the stuff that we put our hips through these days. I'm holding each stretch for about a minute and that's what my timer that I'm balancing on the front of the thigh. Yeah, no, that's, that's pretty smooth right there, balancing it on the thigh. That is set for a minute. Um, but if these are feeling good, I suggest going 90 seconds, even up to two minutes. Um, like I said, if it feels okay for you, if you're in a version that you can uh, sustain that two minutes for. So now hopping over onto the other side, I'm doing the same thing. I start my hip flexor stretch position. I start opening that front of the hip. 
this side I didn't feel like balancing the timer um, and now I pull my heel up and I'm into this yoga quad stretch capturing more quad and this is quite a bit on the balance here as well so if you are enjoying this stretching routine uh, like I mentioned before you can download it for free it'll be the first link in the description and I have instructional instruct instructional instructional videos for each exercise so you can get a little bit more detailed cues on what you're doing um, but no pressure if you don't want to download it you can simply follow along with this video and that is great too so you can throw your pad or sweatshirt out of the way now and we're gonna hop into some shoulder extension stretching this is some of my favorite stretching because I think that most people just miss out on this this is something that we just simply don't get much of and that's the ability to bring the shoulder uh, into extension and bring the arms behind you so this is called the lounge chair I'm in a seated position with all fours down and then I'm going to press my hands down into the ground, pull my shoulder blades back and shift my hips forward. Now, right now I'm holding my hips off the ground. That's a little bit more intense. If you're a beginner to this, you can set the hips down. This is gonna feel really, really good on the shoulder. You're gonna feel some stretching in the front and in the chest. It might be a little intense if you've never done it before. And now I'm going into the harder variation, which is essentially the same thing, but I'm driving my hips upward. Um, this is called a crab press, or some people refer to it as a reverse plank, but I'm trying to get my torso to parallel to the ground, squeezing my butt up, and then actively pulling the shoulders back and pressing the hands into the ground. This one's pretty intense. I wouldn't jump to that first off. I'd start with the lounge chair and then see if you can work your way into that reverse plank. Okay guys, next we're moving into a standing position, feet about shoulder width, and we're going to do a straight leg good morning. So we're gonna hinge at the hips, bring the torso down, shooting to get parallel to the ground. I want you to keep your torso uh, extended or neutral, and we want those knees to stay locked, and we want the hips to travel backward. So I'm only gonna go as low as I can with keeping that back uh, in a neutral position. So if you're starting to get that, any back rounding or any uh, uh, flexion in the spine, that's what I'm looking for, then you've gone too far. So the next rep, you wanna go a little bit less far. So I'm going pretty damn low here because I've worked to get a little bit more flexible in this position. Uh, for you, you probably won't be able to get this low. You can go to parallel if that's achievable. I love this exercise because we're getting some hamstring stretching and lengthening, but we're also using that backside to, uh, to uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Power us, fuel us, move us up and down, right? <laughs> so the hamstrings, glutes, and back, hold at the bottom position for 10 seconds on the last rep, stand up, feel good about yourself. And next is the deep squat sit. So you're simply just going to sit down in a deep squat position here. For some of us, this will be easy. This will be a bit of a break. For some of us, I see some of you dudes out there, this will be nice and stiff, and this will be a really challenging position. I used to be just like you, but I spent a lot of time doing the stuff we're doing in this routine. So. Um, if you're feeling comfortable here, you can do these little elbow presses against the knee to kind of open up the hips. Uh, if not, if you're feeling really stiff, just go ahead and sit in this position. And if you can't get deep into this, then I'm going to have you elevate your heels. Take some books, even just take your shoes, place your heels on them. That's going to allow most people to sit down into a deep squat. Um, and if that still isn't doing the trick, you can just go ahead and hold on to something in front of you, a chair or a wall, um, and that will do the trick. You'll be able to get down here somehow. So that was a minute right here. I'm gonna do another 30 seconds or so and just kind of, I don't know, I was feeling like changing positions. I don't know what to tell you. 
but um, <laughs> try to get comfortable here. You can do some bounces like I'm doing. You can kind of wiggle around. This is something, another thing that's missing from uh, our culture. We need to sit down in the squat more. And at this point, there must have been a really good song going on because I was feeling it. Uh, we're going to move into the downward dog press. So we start in a quadruped position. Knees can be on the ground or floating. And we're going to press back into downward dog. Now, this variation is the bent knee variation. And I actually don't have this in the official daily practice. So you get the exclusive here on YouTube. I like the bent knee variation because it allows us to get more into the spine. Keeps the hips tucked and it allows us to press into that thoracic spine that, that middle of the shoulder blades position so i do five there and then i start extending my knees into a fuller downward dog position this is challenging of course this takes hamstring flexibility calf flexibility um, and spine flexibility of course so uh, once again you may not be looking like this uh, your heels may be off the ground a little bit all that matters is each day we're trying to get a little bit deeper into this down dog position and same as before the chest is being pressed towards the knees trying to press that chest and head through you can hold in the last one for 10 seconds or so from here i just walk myself back into a little forward fold stretch um, you can depending on your flexibility you can pull yourself into this or you can just let the torso hang down i'm just doing this as a little transition here for about 10 seconds or so so Go ahead and stand back up. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned is that this whole routine requires absolutely no equipment. Uh, beside from the stool that I had here, which you could replace with a wall. So, you know, anybody's going to have a wall next to them. You can do this whole routine with nothing. And that's that was uh, by design. I wanted it to be that way so there would be no excuses. The last exercise is the basic crawl. So you're in your quadruped position and you're just going to move opposite limbs forward to propel yourself forward. Keep those knees close to the ground and try to keep your torso really neutral here. Notice how I'm moving slow and controlled. I'm not getting a lot of lateral or rotational movement from my hips or my torso. I'm trying to keep everything stacked in a line. So I did one little round here. I think I'm going to do another one because I was feeling good. And uh, make sure to really press the ground away with your hands. This is reactive core strength. This is the core strength that's really usable in life, right? This is how you should be training your core. And if going backwards is too challenging in the beginning, just practice going forwards for a while and you'll get the backwards eventually. Guys, that's it. Hope you are feeling as good as I am if you enjoyed doing this routine or just watching it. Be sure to like the video and I appreciate you. You can peace out from here or if you're not sick of me by now, you can stick around and listen to me talk a little bit longer. So the reason why I created the daily practice was for two reasons. Number one, the physicality of it. Um, the daily practice hits all the big ranges of motion in your body so it allows you to maintain and improve and gain on um, basic mobility flexibility and movements now number two the part that is more important to me is having a, a daily practice a daily routine um, especially in the physical sense because we're all living in physical bodies here is very very important and I think that it can really uh, it can really create positive change in your life because not only are you creating this positive habit um, that you're doing something for yourself every day and you're doing something good for your body but you're also proving to yourself that you can prioritize yourself and, and take yourself seriously and what i see with people is once you start implementing something as simple as this routine you start feeling better you start feeling more flexible and stronger and that leads you into hey maybe i want to do more strength training so you find a strength training program that you like 
you start walking more, you start listening to some health and fitness podcasts, and basically you just create this cascade and snowball effect in your life of just implementing more and more good shit. It's very, very important to know that it starts with something simple. It doesn't start with committing to doing uh, 30 boot camp classes a month. It starts with something simple as taking 10 to 15 minutes a day, proving yourself that you can do that, and then building upon it. Guys, thank you for letting me turn this YouTube video into a podcast. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. You know what, if you made it this far, comment below let me know let's see if you made it this far comment your favorite color below that's how i'll know that you made it all the way to the end of the video my favorite color is red i'm going to comment that below uh like i said i appreciate all y'all subscribe to strength side as always